Hey YouTube, today is an incredibly special day because I am the first individual to be invited to film the Wet Spots Tropical Fish's private warehouse. This warehouse with over 1,200 fish tanks is used to sell and ship fish online, quarantine all new fish in individually filtered aquariums, and a special section used to breed hundreds of fish. This is truly a special experience and I guarantee you will see species of fish you've never seen before. So sit back, grab your popcorn, and join me on this unforgettable journey to the Wet Spots private facility. All right, what a, oh my gosh, look at these giants. Some big old Bashirs, these are the marble Bashirs. Uh, Polyterpterus palmus, palmus. We don't usually get them in this big. These are also wild caught. So those are a real um, treat. Uh, whenever you're shopping for Bashiris, you're gonna notice that your tank raised are gonna be a little bit more budget friendly than your wild caught. Uh, but they're really worth it in my opinion. Yeah, this is a great size. Wow. Looks like we got a couple tanks of ghost knife here. Yep, these guys are still on quarantine, so they're going through some meds. Uh, so if the water is like kind of blue, kind of murky, that's just helping them uh, feel better after their travels. These guys look a little bit better in here. Oh yeah. And we get these guys quite often, and you know these are a really cool fish. But make sure to do your research on them because they do need a pretty good tank size eventually. Uh, what do we got here? Spotted demon fish. All right. Wild caught from Colombia. Uh, so Santaperca Damien. Um, they're very cool, very cool fish. I like these. These are one of my personal favorite, uh, the Cupid Cichlid. If I was gonna do a biotope, I'd wanna do one of these guys. They're quite shy, <laughs> but I really love them. You could have fooled me. <laughs> yeah, they're not usually this forward, but uh, I mean, like, I guess not shy necessarily with people, but with other fish, they're very shy. Oh, okay. They're very easily outcompeted for food, so this is not like a good fish to get one and throw it in with all your geophagus. They will not be happy. Uh, geophagus uh, Tanio Perellius. <laughs> Something like that. And then Something like that. And then also, our, uh, if you see a silver dollar in the back with a messed up eye, he came in like that, um, came in sick, and we've had him for almost a year now, and he just, we keep feeding him and taking care of him. We haven't named him yet, though. A, um, a future mascot? Yeah, he, uh, well, he just keeps living, you know, despite, he had a tumor, so oh, wow, his yeah. whole face exploded, and uh, we cleaned him up, gave him some meds, and he just kept living, so. Wow, that's he's, neat. He's pretty happy, he still eats, does his thing. Okay, so I wouldn't mind seeing these. Yeah. Uh, Semi-spotted eels. We'll help them come out and say hello. Here, I'm gonna twist this one so okay. they can come say hello. And they all move to the back. <laughs> all right. Oh, nice. And they're cute little guys. They're feeling a bit shy today. Like most eels. Like most eels are. We don't have very many, it looks like. It looks like we only got like six or seven. Um, all of that mulm in the tank is gonna be because they get fed very heavily while they're here. Yep, I've already seen a few pieces of food in the tanks, which is, like I said, I love to see. Yep, we mix all of our rapashi. It's one of uh, the weekly chores that everybody passes off taking turns on. <laughs> all right, now here are some really beautiful bikers by Shears. Uh, the gold dust. I'm not going to try to pronounce that, but... Uh, it's like... Beote uh, Kofferfe. Kofferfe. <laughs> I did Sounds know how good to say to it me. at one point. <laughs> but these are like... I mean, these are the most beautiful bikers I've ever seen. This is insane. Do you know if this is full size or do they get monsters like all the other ones? They or? get a little bit bigger than this. I want to say these top out around eight, but I'm not 100% oh, okay. positive. They don't get massive, uh, but they... Uh, they do get really nice colors on them. These are Delhesii, one of the more popular ones. Looks like another uh, tank of red bala sharks. It's a very cool, very cool fish. Yeah, I love those. We don't have those very often. So this is a freshwater moray eel. And I don't really know anything about it. They'll get super strong. This is the smallest we've had them in. Uh, when we get them in bigger, we've had to literally put bricks on the roof of the tank 
the glass to keep them from popping the lid off because they're wow. very, very strong, very, very muscular. Two people to catch it, like very strong fish. Uh, if you choose to get a fish like this, you make sure you have a really good setup for it. Do you know um, the max size on them? Um, I can't remember. I'm. It's pretty darn big. Is it three feet, roughly there? Yeah. Wow, beautiful. All right, and one of my favorite quarries, even though they're very uh, easy to breed, easy to spawn, but they're just, they get a really big, they get nice and green. And you can't really see it, there you go, yeah. And they're inexpensive, they're just super active quarries, I love them. All right, looks like some wild caught Jurupari from Peru. Always a favorite. Here we have some ornate bitchers. And these are just absolutely stunning. The Crenchalata species Zingu 1 uh, is what they're calling them now, which I'm guessing is just the collection point. Um, but absolutely crazy orange colors on these. These do not stay orange into adulthood. Uh, so that's yeah, really the only cool. unfortunate part. And they get about 15 inches, 12 to 15 inches. So definitely need a large tank. According to Monster Fish Keepers, that's what they're coming up as for the one. Yeah, as adults they get these, and this is when they're breeding too, is when they yeah. get this color. So that must be the regular coloration right there where it's more brown. Yeah. So, still a really cool fish, just it's not going to stay that bright colorful orange that uh, attracts people to them when they're selling. But if you make them happy, you're going to get some crazy red colors out of them. Wow, a whole tank of red eye puffer. Oh, a couple. Wow. Just, just a few, just a few. Uh, red eye red tail Sumatran puffer. Have you noticed any aggression at all? Yes, um, this batch is mostly female. So we were talking about this earlier, me and the keeper were, um, they're a lot more chill this time around, but we've had batches come in that were all male and uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, I've seen like three of them just turn on one and rip it to pieces. So they're pretty aggressive. I would not keep less than like, I would not keep less than five. Uh, okay. Personally, just from, I haven't kept them, but just from what I've seen, unless you've got plenty of hiding areas and we usually, when we get towards the end of batches, we have to split them up. We have smaller holding tanks. There are 10 gallons and we'll have to split them up and put one per tank because otherwise they'll eat each other. Good to know. Basically like your cichlids then, and just uh, try to spread around the aggression. Yep. Here are some uh, Geophagus sphenii. Probably not pronouncing that right, but. That was pretty close. I just love Geophagus. I mean, they're just a good fish. they keep your substrate clean. Just sift through it. If you see these squares on the tank, uh, this means that the fish aren't on any meds. They're, uh, they're doing 100% healthy and they're ready to like, go to their new home. So that's what these random squares mean. That you So that doesn't catch. mean that the fish are square? <laughs> yeah. Boring? No, they're not square. <laughs> uh, I know these are just electric blue acara, but I do want to point out that ours do not have super sunken in bellies because that tends to be a problem when importing these guys. Yep. Uh, we put a lot of extra work into getting them fat and happy. And if I can get them locally from like someone who spawned them themselves, I will take those over, uh, over you know, farm bred fish any day so so do you guys have local breeders or like a local breeder not even local but if a breeder approached you and have a, say it's like I have 500 of these would you take them uh, yeah but it really depends on the fish and we like have a payout for in-store credit and then we have a payout for cash that's a little bit less um, you know we're not gonna have super competitive prices but we do appreciate when we can get healthy stuff um, that is like more local, but we are pretty picky. So that's something to keep in mind if you think about reaching out. Um, we're pretty picky about what we will and won't take, but. Which is good. There's a, there's a reason for that. Cause like, especially with like electric blues, a lot of things that happen are the calcium deficiency and they get zigzag spines. Um, we can't mm. take those fish from you. I'm really sorry, but uh, you know, we have to sell them as adoptables, so. All right, I'm seeing a goofball down here that I gotta look at. The red hump. Earth Eater. This guy, he's ready. He wants a female. Look at this guy. He's going to get a lot larger too. And he's already colored up so well. Just a testament to how well you guys care for your fish here. These dwarf green pikes are the best color 
Uh, the ones that I saw in the store, just really good color on these. They stay in that like four inch range. Yeah, they're very cool. Like if you want a pike, this is probably, and you haven't kept them before and you have a lot of space, this is definitely where you should start. Um, I would say, um, and I don't, maybe I'm wrong here, this is like one where you want one or you want like six, right? Correct, yeah. Okay. Yep, they max out at around uh, 3.9 inches, so. Yeah, no, definitely with fish that have aggression, it's usually best to keep one or two overstock. You don't, you want to be able to spread that out. Getting two would be a nightmare. <laughs> oh, I wanted to see these. I saw these leopard spiny eels. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay, I gotta mm -hmm. zoom in on this guy. That is, I'm getting one of these, I don't even care. <laughs> Price means I nothing. I think these are around 50 bucks, <laughs> I think. Wow. Do you know the max size on these? I don't, but they are really oh stunning gosh. and we do not get these very often at all. This, yeah. But these guys sure do look good. And look at how friendly they are. You just like, they're not gonna, they're pretty low key. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at one of my favorite rows, and that's because we're gonna be starting with Corydoras. Um, Susie, I, I wanna say, but I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. I think we call them Susie, but you Susi, know, everybody okay. pronounces it a little bit different, I think. Oh, I guess, yeah, there's, sometimes there's one eye, sometimes there's two, so whatever. But only a couple left, but a really rare species that you don't see very often, so that's pretty neat. I, I love the white bellies on them, and they have kind of a flag tail. Shame there's only five left though. Get them quick! Then Corydoras Davidsidae, which kind of look like Melanai Corydoras, but not sure what the difference is. Not one you see very often though, so that's cool. That's a new one for me. Uh, looks like spotted Raphael's? Yeah, these guys are really neat. Let's see if I can get them to spin out a little bit. There we go. Do you know the max size on these? I'm gonna ask that a lot, so. <laughs> I should just keep my phone out to Google because I'm not sure, but I'm gonna guess these are probably around seven inches. Okay, pretty typical. Uh, yeah, pretty. they should be pretty close to the same, but just spotted, which we have both right now, so that's pretty cool. Awesome. So these I wanted to ask about because yeah. they're marked as upside down catfish, but they're not upside down. I asked about it because I was worried about them and they were told me, they told me that they are fine, but they're really cute. Oh my goodness. Here are actual upside down. So, you know, these guys swim upside down so that they can glean things from the underside of floating <laughs> plants and stuff on the river. So river fish, give it flow. There you go. Pretty neat. Okay, pygmy driftwood cat. I was hoping there's some in here. There just hiding. is. I see him. Stay put, Mike. Oh yeah, there's. Oh wow. And there's some up in the corner there. There we go. Wow, that's a beautiful fish. Yeah, we don't get these very often. This is a very rare find. So, excuse me. Thank you. Do you know if they're wild caught or? Yes, they are wild caught. Do you happen to know if anyone spawned them? Uh, I do not know. Um, usually on these catfish, there are very few spawning reports on any catfish. And then one that I might get myself, the dwarf bumblebee, which are pretty neat. Is there something else in with them? Yeah, there should be the uh, dwarf draft oh, cats as well. Oh, the dwarf, yes, those are really awesome. Nice. This is one of my personal favorites we have right now, Synodonis walleri. Cheetah squeaker cat. And um, we've also got the... big eyes synodonis in here, so. Yeah, that's the, that's the one I was looking at. Both of these are very cool. I love the yellow fins on them. Mm -hmm. And then the, on the other ones, they just have the gigantic eyeballs. They're so cool. <laughs> Robert Sonai, synodonis Robert Sonai, and uh, yellow banded catfish. Can you guess which one is which? <laughs> One is well, yellow, one is not. Exactly. Love seeing more Cynodonis in the this hobby. This is like the most Cynodonis I've seen us have at once. The dwarf flag cichlids. I mean, this is a good little cichlid if you wanna. Nice full bellies on them too. Yeah, they've been eating good. Awesome, I really love those. 
Now these guys, the Redfin Penguin Tetras, are absolutely beautiful. Um, do you know anything about these? Well, I've never seen them before. Not really, no. This is the first time we've gotten them in. Uh, I know that they are a fan favorite for the fish room already, so we're going to be trying to get them more regularly. I believe they're really cool. South American as well, but yeah, super cool. And then the Red Crystal Tetra in the back, which I think is a good alternative for Ember Tetras. They're not really colored up right now, but they get really, really colorful. They can get really colorful, yeah. yeah. They just need some more time to settle in. Oh boy. The so red got... cherry tetras. Yeah, wow. so these ones are Oops. are wild ones. We've had wilds. We have currently have wilds and F1s, so that's pretty rare. We don't usually have that. And you can see we've got them mixed in there with some checkerboard cichlids. And then some high festive brightcon parvellus. Yeah. I'm not familiar with that one. That's pretty neat. That's a new one for me. It's always exciting. I can't keep track of them all. There's way too many. <laughs> and then see here's uh, the, uh, these are the F1 ones. So they're just a little bit smaller, as you can tell. It's a good cost effective. You know, they're slightly cheaper. The other yeah, ones are like $20, so. Really good color on these ones. And there's some uh, Pistogramma Bashunai Incas in there as well. My so. favorite. They're very cute. That's one of my favorites too, as far yep. as the pistos go. Golden Flash Tetra. That's a new one for me. I press a break on that. And then uh, a Pistogramma Personata, which I love and I got from you last week. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Pink Lemonade Tetra. This is a new one for me. Another new one. And they were colored up earlier, not so much now. They're really cool, I promise. You have to look at a picture of them. They've got that pink coming in from the tail into the mid body along the spine. Um, but yeah. And like a subtle blue hue to them as well, maybe purple. Uh, Epistogramma agazizii tefi red back. And what's the tetra? And tetra. And tetra. So what? Hi, hi, what? How do you say that? Hi. Hi, Fessa Brycon. Meyer mix. Okay, these are really nice. Yeah, we don't get these very often. Holy They're smokes. a little pricey, but they are like very coveted. When we get them in, we have about the same six customers who usually end up buying <laughs> them all out. I can see why. This is another new one for me. High festive Rikon Zingu. Lacorte Sunset Tetras. Oh, the Lacorte. Yeah. Okay. So we get these. I've seen them a couple times in the last like two years, but like they're they're not super common. They're like a medium. We get them like maybe two or three times a year. Okay. Uh, I also just got some of these from you as well. The Epistogramma Hoignii. I don't know. Yeah. Really nice mail back here. And then the Unicorn Tetra. Again, another new Tetra for me. That's so cool. This is a new one for me too. Wow. So exciting seeing all the new Tetras coming out now. So, Epistogramma Ortegii? Yes. Possibly? Phoebus, yep. That female's ready to spawn. She needs a male. Uh, and I also got some of these from you. All right. You got all of our coolest Epistos that we had, so. Well, good, that was pretty lucky then. These are just our uh, Blue Emperor Tetris. Uh, we always have these. These are a good alternative Tetra if you don't want to be getting, you know, neons and things like that. It's a little bit different. They get a little bit bigger. Uh, golden Soldier Catfish. All right. Do you know much about these? Uh, I don't know much about these. So we've gotten them in the last two shipments and before that I've never seen them before. So yeah, this is a new one for me. If that's full size, that'd be pretty awesome. But something uh, tells me they might get a little I bigger. I doubt that that's full size. <laughs> I doubt yeah. that they're massive at the same time. Uh, blueberry Tetras. Little, little growing to do before they get their color. I think we saw some bigger ones earlier that we'll get to. Now these yeah. I want to take a look at. Is these the shadow? Yeah, the shadow pygmy cats. I've tried these once without luck. Um, have you guys had any issues with them? Um, you know, I haven't seen these before. This is the first time I've seen them. So I'm not totally sure. Um, pygmy cats, catfish are difficult because like a lot of times they need to be kept in a decent sized group. If people are only getting like one or two, they could be getting really stressed out and passing away just from that. 
And I see you feeding uh, brine shrimp? Yes, they get live baby brine. They probably are also offered some rapashi. But um, there's a note on the tank saying to give them baby brine. So that's probably primarily what they're getting right now, just to get them all good and fat and happy. All those pink bellies right there is because they uh, ate baby brine for dinner. They had quite a bit of it just about an hour ago. So if oh, you yeah, see pink see bellies, it. that's why. Uh, the giant skunk quarry CW06. Uh, which is a corridor as a Bethanie. Now, as you can see, these guys are being medicated. They're still on quarantine, um, but you know, they're doing really well. We haven't had any DOAs, it looks like. No, no deaths since they got here. Uh, we just want to make sure that they are extra healthy before they go to their new homes, which is why when you check our FAQs online, we'll stress to not med your fish when you buy them from us because they've already been through their meds here and too many meds can be really harmful for fish. Yeah, no, no reason to put them, their kidneys through that twice. Exactly. And for anyone curious, these should get about an inch larger um, as they get, they just get really big, obviously giant. Uh, if you're wondering what's the difference between them and like the Arcuatus or the Grantii. And now this looks like a fun tank up here. Striped glass catfish. Same thing, I've never seen these before this summer. We've gotten them in like twice. They've been a real fun ad for us. They look like catfish, but or the glass cats, just way bigger. Yeah, and they're gonna be like more of a catfish, like kind of like a butter cat kind of family, if that makes sense. And uh, they got the nice black uh, lateral lines. That's that's pretty neat. That's a new one for me. These guys are still on quarantine as well. Oh, there's so many fish here I've never seen before. It's crazy. Oh, there's one really nice colored up male. Oh, this guy's got the full line and everything. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, these are just stunning. We have watermelon tetras pretty consistently, so if you're willing to pour a good chunk of money into some tetras, these are a very good choice. These are really neat. Yeah, the, the glass bloodfin. Really pretty fish. Very cool catfish. Nigerian giraffe cat. Well, they're nice and fat. Been eaten plenty. We gotta counteract any worms that oh. we're working on currently. See, all kinds of rapashi in here. They get between two and three feet long, so these guys <laughs> are smokes. quite a uh, Need a big commitment tank. if you're gonna get these. Or a pool. But uh, yeah, a pool would be good. But um, you can see they're putting on weight. There's a good chance looking at kind of their meds list, which uh, is, you know, looking at their meds history, that they're probably at the tail end of this, getting pretty close to coming off of their quarantine and finally being ready to go to their new homes, so. Perfect, look for them, as long as you got a big enough tank. All right, one of my favorites, the Sailfin Tetra. Um, these were new to me last year, and I still haven't got a hold of any, but someday I will definitely keep this fish. Just a really cool, these are really mellow, so you don't want them with anything too boisterous uh, or they won't get any food, but the males just like to sit here and flare, which is really cool. C-102 leopard quarries, nice big group of them. Really good size. What are these guys? Two spots, some, some Tarian two spot cats. So, uh, Mistis uh, by Maculatus. Yeah, I've never seen these ones. Yeah, we've gotten these in twice this summer as well. I, I'm i obsessed. They're really cute. And the um, nice thing about these ones is they're not shy at all. No, they're out and about. They've been like this since the day they got here. And these are wild caught. Like, pretty much all catfish are wild caught. You figure Just out. so you know. Just so you know. Uh, Pristilla tetras. We've all seen uh, Pristilla tetras. Blind cave tetras. We have to show these off. We do not get these very often. Now these guys just ping pong all around the tank because they don't got eyes. They don't know where they're going. They just go till they hit a wall. Um, but they're always out and about because they're pretty much not scared of anything. Um, Are they always this active? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they're always this active. I, I have a couple friends that keep these in their home aquariums. Uh, they're definitely like if you want to put together, we call it like a goth tank where you have like blind cave tetras <laughs> and other like creepy looking stuff, you know. Fun. Yeah. Um, All right, so here's a rare quarry you don't see too often. <laughs> um, I want to point out, we have this thing written on the tank that says soak. So uh, you know that some quarries release toxins uh, when they are stressed. 
This is one of those quarries that we make sure to soak them in a separate bucket uh, for a little bit, like for a few hours before they actually go into their bag for shipping. And then we add carbon to the bag as well. So hopefully okay. we can get all that. The theory is getting that toxin out of their system before they go in the bag. Uh, and then they're less likely to leave that toxin in the bag. We also ship them in a bigger bag with fewer just to try to, you know, that yeah, helps us not have there, DOAs. Yeah. Well, the ones I got did just fine. Yep, yep, because we, we did soak those ones too. I love their, it's like a better similis, like a way better. They still got the tail spot and they got like little flag tails. It's really cool. Now this is a pencil fish that we have almost all the time. So if you're wanting to try pencil fish, these guys are cost effective, very cute, very much worth your time. Yes, all pencil fish. All pencil fish. Uh, oh, gold tetras. I like these. I usually try to get customers to buy these when they're um, on the fence about what tetra to buy. They're so crazy. I love them. Yeah, very cute. And then the red tail hemiodis. Yeah, those came in there as uh, bycatches. So sometimes when things are wild caught, other things that look kind of similar slip in with them. Um, those guys are quite a bit smaller and we usually sell them. So my guess is, is that we'll keep them for a while so we can grow them out before sending them anywhere else. Nice. And then a Corridor is Virginia, which I'll be going home with a couple of these to up my numbers. I got a small school of them now because I did not get them from uh, the wet spot, so a lot of them died. <laughs> uh, con color. I really like these ones. Um, these are, what do I want to say? These are not full grown, so they don't have all the color yet, but they get nice bronze kind of rusty fins uh, and then like a dark gray body. In the slate quarry. Yep. And if oh you, my God, I didn't even see this yes. guy. So I was gonna say, if you see random plecos in some of our tanks, it's usually because they either have or had some sort of like fin tear or abnormality. We can't sell them at full price. So we usually, uh, we don't like to like throw, when fish are defunct, we don't, you know, kill them or anything like that. We find homes for them usually in the warehouse. Uh, so he's helping keep tanks clean and uh, nice. put them to work. Yep. And a lot of times they end up going home with staff eventually, honestly. So that doesn't surprise me. Develop a bond over time. Yes. <laughs> now, I really like these, the Lorto uh, Tetra. Um, so this is new to me this year. I discovered them earlier this year, but this is my first time seeing them in person. And uh, I got to say, they got like a nice green body with the red tips on the uh, or the red fins. And they're not uh, insanely expensive too, so a nice, another nice alternative. Pretty cool. These came in pretty good this time around. And then the white fin tetra, or the weird common name of HY511. Uh, maybe someday I'll figure out why they called them that, but I don't know right now. Maybe someone can leave some knowledge in the comments if they know the history of HY511 for a common name. So what does don't square mean? See right here in this corner where it says R37 first. That means we need to catch, there's two tanks of these Emperor Tetras. They want us to completely empty out the other tank oh, okay. before we start catching from this tank. So that's what that means. So the don't is just don't catch out of this tank, but they don't have any Okay, oh, water. I see it here. I was gonna ask about that, like don't. Yeah. Catch. Yes, okay. that's just to help our catch team because we do have individual row keepers, but everybody catches out of all rows, so. Now here's a really cool tetra, the hummingbird or darter tetra, uh, Charisidium species. And the cool thing about these is you can buy these probably six times and get six different species. Yes. Um, it I, says right there, you can see it says, uh, plus contams, yep. which means contaminants. We get lots of uh, sneaker fish in there as well. So with Charisidium, um, these darter tetras, there's tons of different species and not a lot of work has been done to separate the identity. So that's pretty much why you just get the species. And it's just cool. You never know what you're going to get. They're all pretty much look alike, but there's subtle differences. Pretty nice. Corridor is Equius, which is one of my all time favorites. And then the corridor is a Dolphoy. Um, I think the Equius is one of the best looking quarries in the hobby. It's not often that we have the wild Adolfoi. That's what these are. They're, oh, wow. they're wild instead of tank raised. Hmm, I might have to get some. The slender tetra. Oh, 
Oh, it's got a little like red These line. These are super on it. cool. I wish they'd hold still for us more so you could really see. It's like they've got a pinstripe on them. Yeah, I don't see it on the camera, but when I'm looking at them, I see the red pinstripe, kind oh. of a silver black stripe as well. Really cool. Obviously, really active fish. Uh, those are neat. Orange flame tetra, Hyphesobrycon flamius, uh, is one that I think is really underrated. And they'll get way more orange once they're settled in, but you can already you can already see a good chunk of orange on them. Really cool, just a rounder, bigger body tetra. Okay, now these guys, I thought maybe I'd these want to get some of these. Cat. You should. They're very they're very great. The Misi? Misi. Misi. Yeah, these are very beloved. We have them very regularly, so if you're not ready to like commit now, we will have them again in the future. Um, but these are definitely a fan favorite in the fish room. They're very out and about catfish, so if you want something that's not just gonna hide under a log all the time. There you go. Uh, so here's a cooler new ancestral species, the L519. Um, kind of small, but they get a really nice honeycomb pattern on them, which you can kind of see on these babies. And these are actually on the website right now for a really good price. There's some on the back wall of the tank. We might be able to... Oh, yeah, there we go. Wow. And they'll, as they get older, it'll turn into like an orange honeycomb. Yeah, this is one of the few that like when they get bigger, they're even better. So it's definitely a good investment. And like I said, great price on these. I would jump on these right now. Oh, now they're out and about. There we go. Oops, there. Yeah, when they get that orange, they just really, they're really beautiful. So this is the Blood Red Tiger Pleco, the L306. Really cool, kind of like an L397 candy stripe, but wow, that is a really good color for a fish that size. Holy smokes. Our row keeper puts a lot of work into these guys when they come in. It shows. And speaking of L397, here they are right here. Well, you can't say a bad thing about this fish. Although it'd be nice to see the top side of one. I know, they're being <laughs> so sneaky. I just have to... Oh, here, there we go. There's a good shot of them, briefly. They're very shy. Oop, and we got one bushy nose in there. <laughs> So these are labeled as the Redfin Auto Sinkless, but just a different type of auto. Maculata. Uh, do they seem to eat algae just as well or? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not totally sure on these guys. I know that these guys are primarily being fed rapashi is what they're gonna be eating in the tank. That's always okay. hard to say when you get them into the home aquarium. I never rely on any fish to eat my algae. I just- uh, Find the problem. Find the problem. Fix it. Yeah. <laughs> But they do have this really cool, I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, almost like giraffe print, or I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, pretty nice. Pisonatus notatus, black auto sinkless. Um, I don't know that I've ever seen this one. There's one here on this plant too that's pretty out. Oh yeah. yeah that's pretty cool. Oh, right here on the, on the, that's a good shot. We got some whip tails. We, go. we got these pretty much all the time. They're very cool. Add to your tank. But we got the really cool ones. Yes, and this guy's a monster. Chameleon with tails. Which, like, to give you guys an idea of how big this guy is, like, he's... Woo. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. He's very large. And Wake he... up. He wants to be left alone for the most part. Oh, he's part. got the really nice liar tail too. Yes, yeah, yeah big old liar tail. Um, they, they don't move a lot. So these guys, even though they get big, they don't need a ton of tank space. Well, that's always nice. However, you don't want something else that's gonna be like sifting through the sand a bunch and annoying them or dive bombing them or anything. So keep that in mind still. As you can see, he's not very aggressive. <laughs> no, he didn't even move. That's like me when you try to get me to move. The L47, which I wanna say is a mango pleco. Yeah. These guys, we got one under that log. There's one there. There you go. We don't get these super often, maybe only like four or five times a year. Not very big shipments. A lot of our rare stuff comes in smaller shipments. And they got the nice white tipped fins, kind of a yellowish white, uh, but still very cool. Good size on these, very good size. Now, I've seen here 86 degrees. Yes. Uh, 
um, the keeper wrote a lot of notes on these. So the, uh, the tanks that have like these high temps written on them, um, a lot of these are going to be because Ooh. they're growing, they're trying to eliminate the chance of uh, other sicknesses. Uh, we don't want any ick, we don't want any velvet, anything like that. Um, so we will have these tanks individually. Most of, most of our tanks are just heated by the room. We do not have heaters in every single tank, but for a lot of our plecos, we do have them heated. Oh wow, this guy's showing off for us right here. Yeah, he looks the stunning. L204. That's the pinstripe pen, panaquay. They'll eat you out of house and home in the cost of wood, but worth it. Worth it. Very pretty. Oh, the L141, just some ancestrous. Ghost plecos. They're under oh, that the log. Oh, ghost pleco. Oh, I've always wanted to see these in person. Yeah, these ones are one that um, people might be fighting over to take them home. <laughs> yeah, I, you see these online, and the pictures are like, do they really look like that? You never really know. They're pretty, like, they're like ghostly gray. Yeah, it's very bizarre. Wow, those are neat. Okay, I would like to see if we can find I some of these. I love paras. I will shout them out any chance that I can get. Yep, one of my all-time favorites. Watch out. I'm gonna... This tank is hot. Wow, 88? That's crazy. There we oh, go. Oh, there he goes. No, come on out, bubby. They got like the cheetah pattering on them. This is so cool. This Here. is a good size, I'm too. Let's spook out another one. Oh, yeah. We have these fairly regularly. They are a pretty penny. Um, but they're very much worth it in my opinion. Um, There's a good one. Wow. They do need um, a little bit more particular care than uh, some of your other plecos, so you keep that in mind. They're not one that you just get and throw in with anything. The leopard frog. And there's just a ton of them in here, which makes it really cool. We get them pretty often in larger groups, which is kind of nice because, like, usually um, for a lot of our plecos, we'll, be, we'll maybe only get like, you know, 10 to 15, and then these we can get upwards to 20 in a batch. Well, and the size is, is excellent. Normally, they, like, when I see these for sale, they're like an inch and a half. Yeah, and they're usually around this size every time we get them in, so... Uh, oh, I got a nice supplier. When you're then. looking to get leopard frog plecos, we also have one of the lowest prices out there, so you should definitely check us out. It's a place to be. LDA08, another one that we should might all be familiar with, but maybe not. Just the uh, Ancestress Claro, which is like a small bushy nose pleco. The, oh, the Redfin Sterlina, one of my all-time favorites. Really beautiful fish. They get big. They should get right around 10 inches, so you know, you want 75 gallons or something like that. They might even get bigger. Not positive on that. But you should always do your research. Don't trust us YouTubers. And uh, read more than one source. Absolutely. We are big Planet Catfish fans in this household. So if you are Great wanting site. to read up on stuff, that is where we suggest reading. And uh, I also like Seriously Fish, although Planet Catfish is definitely the place to go for catfish. L201s, these have the nice larger spots on them. Oh, they just came out and hid, but there's someone right here. Well, we got a brief look at him anyways. <laughs> They're good hiders. L255, now I'm not, oh, spotted Medusa. So this is actually a smaller ancestress too. Yeah, this is one that, oh, here's one up here by the intake filter. There you we want go. a really good look at her. And that's um, like full grown too. Yeah, these are one that I have been thinking about getting for myself next time I feel like venturing into the Pleco world. I'm the, the funny thing about these is that they still get like the giant head of an, of an ancestors, but they have like the small body. It's not a deformity, that's how they're supposed to be. So it's not like a stunted uh, fish or anything. L129, which I think is probably one of the best one if you're starting to get into hype ancestors. Uh, really cool patterns, inexpensive, and a really good starter pleco. Yep, we have these pretty consistently, so. Ancestrous, oh, pseudo ancestrous slate pleco. Okay. We don't get these very often. Yeah, I've never seen these. And look, if you want a pleco that's going to come out, this is the one, apparently. They're not shy at all. It's like they're, it's like they're all coming out to look at me. Take me home, he says. That's pretty neat. L100 Powder Spot Pleco. I don't know that I've ever seen one of these. Got one here on the sponge. Oh. 
Okay, another ancestor. So many ancestors coming yeah, out. Yeah, we um, hadn't, like this is the first time we've had this many ancestors probably since the spring. So it's definitely been a treat. Yeah, very nice fish. The L213, I haven't seen these guys in a while. They're right here. Here we are. Another newer ancestress. And a, probably my favorite all-time pleco, the L264 Sultan plecos. I had a nice colony of them, but unfortunately I had to get rid of them when I moved. Oh, and so I've regretted sad. it ever since. Just I love the black spots with the white tips on a gray body. So cool. Especially when you see them in cracks like that. Not shy either. Well, mine always are came out. Tank rays, so we don't have that very often. It's like some royal plecos in here. Yep. More wood eaters. We're a big fan of those. You can see by the poop, they eat wood all day, every day. Huh. More salt and plecos. Yeah, these ones are wild caught. So oh, okay. We have tank raised and wilds right now. And like I said, this proves it. Not shy. A lot of people don't like plecos because they hide all day, but there's some that'll come out. But these guys, I, if I'm remembering correctly, these have like an omnivore diet, correct? Yeah, so these will also actually eat inver invertebrates in the wild, so snails and shrimp. So keep that in mind. It's, it's rare for them to do it um, in the aquarium as long as you're feeding them. But yeah, omnivores and they do love shrimp. So just something to think about. Some L235s. Flat flyers. Bat flyer pleco. You can see that there's a power head in here. Uh, that actually helps, my notes from the keeper was saying, that helps with aggression, um, huh. which I didn't know. I That's was, interesting. Yeah, she said that a lot of the power heads can really help with uh, helping with aggression in these tanks. And we have them set up very so-so because there is a lot of aggression when you keep just tanks full of plecos. Some more, I think we already saw the L201s, uh, yes. but here's a really cool one. The L172 and the L14. Uh, the Goldie Pleco, one of my favorites, the Leopard L1, or the uh, one, yeah, 172. It's like a parapleco that we saw earlier. It's got that cheetah pattern, but the paraplecos are kind of long and skinny. These guys are chunky. Mm -hmm. And I can see the tail of one. Yeah, these Goldies. I've, I've tried this one time and failed miserably. Goldies are very hard. These are not a beginner fish and they're kind of pitched online as beginners. These and the gold nuggets are pitched as like medium easy. And that is just not true. No, not even close. But yeah, if you can see that patterning on the tail, we're not gonna bug them, but you get the idea. The Medusa Pleco L34 is another smaller ancestress. I love these guys. Yeah. Look at their faces. It's like they're just heads. All head. A head and a tail, very little body. This would be like a, if you've been breeding like your common uh, ancestress, this would be a good step up to try to up your game a little. Not super easy to spawn, but not the hardest by any means. The L91s is another one of my favorite. Now they're just a black pleco, but they have a really cool uh, black and orange spotting on the fins, which I just love. The three beacon pleco, or I guess tri beacon. Either way, common names, you know. We have these pretty uh, often. So Ooh, if guys. you're looking to try to get one, we don't always have the biggest sizes. The size, we have a pretty good size right now, but um, we do regularly have them. So check in with us. Look at these giant black spot hatchet fish. Holy smokes. These are huge. Yeah. I've never seen hatchet fish this large before. Yeah, we get these in a couple, like a couple times a season. I'm always like really looking to take them home. I just do not have the right setup for them. Wow. Those would be cool with like um, any of the geophagus. Wow. You can see our ember tetras. If anything, you can just see how nice and orange ours are. These guys are also getting live baby brine every day. It definitely helps with the color. It does help with the color. Yeah, if you want to up the color of your fish, feed them brine. The axel rod eye tetra. Yeah, these are a really cool tetra. I haven't seen these before. This is my first time. And yeah, nice kind of red, but it's like a, sh it's like a, I don't even know how to describe that red. It's like a highlighter almost. Yeah. Very glow cool. glow stick. Whenever people are wanting to buy a cardinal tetra, I'm always trying to turn them onto these. We have three varieties of cardinals. We have tank raised, 
uh, Colombian and Brazilian, and these are the Brazilians. These are the ones that I always try to just get people to get. They have a little bit of a wider body, and they just they do really good. These are the ones I always try to get people. The reds to buy. look great on those. Yeah, like just trying to show you the different, like what they look like under different lighting. So here's a quarry that I'll be taking home with me, the Weitzman Eye. Really love these guys. Do you know, are these tank raised? These yes. are tank raised ones, yeah. Awesome. And yeah. one lone female guppy just chilling in here. <laughs> just hanging out. Yeah, definitely be taking some of these home. These so I just cool. got some of these, the, uh, actually there's two in here. The flagtail panda, and, and then a really rare quarry is the CW004. They cost a pretty penny, but that's what happens with any rare fish. Really cool. I wish I could afford them. <laughs> <laughs> so here's um, probably one of the best looking quarries, but you wouldn't know it unless they were spawning. The Pantanalensis Corridoras. They look uh, pretty bland right now, but when they're spawning, it is unbelievable. Really cool. Uh, the black short eye or black Venezuelan. Uh, they are short eye, not Venezuelan, but a lot of people call them black Venezuelans. A really cool, very prolific catfish. Here we have the Corridora Cudo Maculatus, which I believe I got some of these, but I got so many fish recently I can't even keep track. I believe you did get these. Okay. <laughs> yeah, these are the ones that we weren't sure. They came in as wild, but then we found out that they are tank oh, okay. race. Okay. And we always want to make sure we let people know the, what fish they're getting. Very cool. Kind of a more rare species. These are cool. Wallace Seachromis rubrolabiatus, formerly pelvic acromis, but reclassified. And I just love their like longer, slender torpedo type bodies, really fun fish. Let's see, I've got some nanochroma splendens down there. Really cool, another really cool West African. Smaller, it only gives them about three inches. And they just have a ton of personality. They're very cute. Yeah, highly recommend any nanochromas. And then up here we're gonna have the red cat moon tetras and African butterfly cichlids. I think we saw some of those African butterflies at the retail store. Yep. We sure did. Really fun fish. We've got some orange flash Congo tetras. Man, the algae on this tank is real rough, but you know, that algae. Yeah, these are uh, not show tanks, so, you know. No, they're not. And you know, when we're feeding as much as we are, that can sometimes happen. Also, if you look straight up, this tank is beneath the skylight, so that's part of uh, what's going on as well. It yeah. makes it a little bit harder to keep up on when it's these hot, sunny days. Now, Okay, I see a lot of good stuff in this tank. This tank is worth it. So we got some Lampi Congos, some Wallachromus Signatus, and Pelvichromus Rolofi. But those Lampis, look at how good they look. Yeah, these are probably some of the best looking Tetras I've ever seen. They're just so pretty. And these come in about that size for us all the time. So I do believe we have them marked at something like $34.99 currently. So they pretty are- Pretty standard. They're, they're a little up there as far as the Tetra is concerned, but they're really worth it if you can pour a good chunk of money into them. Yeah, like any of the newer species, they're, they're not cheap. Blue form red Congo Tetra, and these I'm pretty excited about if they'll come out. There's not very many left. Oh, there we go. These guys out in front. It's probably not showing up on camera like I want it to, but they've got a really beautiful like blue stripe down them. You can kind of see it on the camera, but yeah, it's hard so, to see. Unfortunate, but they will color up and be like really, 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 really stunning. And we don't have those very often at all. Yeah, I've never even heard of them. That's sweet. I think I've got some licorice grommies. We try to keep some really cool varieties of these. Um, and I'm always trying to sell these off, sell these to customers, get them. They're all washed out in the tank, but man, when these guys go into breeding dress, they get these really amazing electric blues especially this variety. If you Google a photo of these or, you know, pop one up, whatever you decide to do, they're absolutely stunning. Goblinus is a very popular fish that we sell quite a lot of. These are a wild caught rasbora, neon blue rasbora. Um, they oh, okay. are tiny but mighty. These are really great little fish and they're kind of like the cousin to the uh, uh, rubabellus that are more red. 
So you could get both and then have like a really cool red and blue Rasbora colony going on. So Awesome. This might be the biggest bushy nose pleco I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, you can see this is one of our mama tanks. So these get, this guy hasn't been cleaned out yet today, but these guys get cleaned a lot and you can see the babies are eating veggies down there. We bring in veggies for them. And uh, so a lot of those are bred in house. Awesome. So we've got these pygmy sword kit tails that we've been breeding in house yeah. for quite a while. and. These are a really fun little sword tail. Uh, I was looking at these earlier. They are little pygmy sword tails. They deserve more love. Um, oh, this is new. Oh yeah, the me. Lima Vitata. These are really neat. Uh, another live bear. I love seeing Lemias get more exposure. Yeah, they really deserve it. Film oh yes, the Coast Cory. This is one of the only Corydoras found on the coast, which is kind of crazy. Uh, and they're not in the saltwater coast, but uh, in tributaries that lead out to the, the coast. So it's kind of interesting. I love these guys. I wish I could get them. So a lot of our killifish are on this row, as, long as, our, as well as our dwarf grommies. And we do have our pearl grommies, which do look quite stunning today. Oh yeah, good size too. Yeah. We always have pretty decent sized ones, which I'm really thankful for. It makes it a lot easier to like try to sex them when customers are hoping for a trio. Uh, gives me a little bit better of a chance with my guests. Now I'm starting to get into half beaks. You know, um, as I you am, know, I got some a couple weeks ago from I, you. I'm so scared of them still. I, uh, they just can be so finicky. And you know, the thing about this, the main mistake I see people make with these is just getting one. These are such nervous little dudes that they really need to have friends. Like if you're just keeping one, he's, he could just waste away. You need to get yourself a decent group of them. But you know, they can just be very finicky about food. They're definitely very cool. These guys are a lot hardier than some of our others. Like our Platinums, um, I, I know a lot of customers can really struggle with sometimes, but these are really cool. We don't get these often. So I have these ones. I believe. Yep. Uh, and they have been outstanding for me. Yeah, I'm so glad to hear that. They eat any yeah. prepared food that I put in there, flake, uh, granules, it doesn't matter, they go after it. We just got ourselves a tank of chocolate garamis here. Personally, one of my favorite garamis. They're super cute. And then the real winners, valiant chocolate oh, wow. garamis. So wow. you can see that some of these already have their um, green and red coloration. Those are going to be your females. And then your ones that are a little bit blander, a little bit browner, gray tones, um, especially in the fins, those are your males. These are one of the few fish where it's reversed, where your females are your super colorful ones and your males are a little bit plainer. So, but wow, those are beautiful. Really great fish, really great fish. So, uh, look at that guy, or I guess gal. That is a gal, <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. Easy to sex. Yes, very easy to sex. And then we've got a tank of Scarlet Battis here. Um, I have been, and this is like kind of a, you know, uh, wet spot only thing. I've been able to successfully sex out some female Scarlet Battis and spawn them. Wow. Um, so uh, we, if you look on our website, we do sell attempted pairs and that is me um, picking those out. Uh, I have a separate tank for my females. I haven't gone through this tank yet because they just came in. I always have to do it right when the tanks come in um, or right when they're like getting really fresh because the females get picked off over time is what I've found. Oh. So I've been able to pull them out. Uh, I would, it's hard to pick them out in here like for the camera to see, but um, they do not have red on their body. They are in fact silver um, and very silvery actually and when they spawn they get like a black bar almost okay so that's a project that me and the gals here have been working on all together hong kong paradise fish yeah right? these are kind of like we just have these usually for the summer it's a good summer tummy tubbing option um we really like these guys we don't keep a lot of paradise fish we usually get them in more seasonally and then see again we have these big old black paradise fish which like to give oh, you wow. an idea how big these suckers are yeah like they're a good a really nice color on the fins two too. and a half inch or so yeah so i've been attempting to sex these out for people um but you know, the females are so exaggerated with their fins as well it can make it difficult 
Wow. So we got tail spot bush fish. We only got a couple in. This was about it. Get well, them while you can. Yeah, I don't know if we'll get these again anytime soon. It was kind of an impulse purchase, I think, on our purchaser's behalf, like just because we don't see them very often. So. Um, very funny little fish. Can I have that job? I just want to buy fish all oh, day, every day. You know, it is it is fun, but you're also planning all the like shipping and scheduling, <laughs> and that is very stressful. <laughs> I bet. Nice. Phoenix glassfish, otherwise known as pelega, pelegi. Hopefully I can get some good B-roll because this is a very beautiful fish, and the camera doesn't pick it up at all. No, we're going to try to have good photos of these guys up online soon, hopefully. I think we're working on that this next week because uh, this is, I'm not a big glass fish fan and I think this is a really cool glass fish. So. Yep, I've got some of those I'll be taking home. So here's a uh, Stipodon N-E-E-E-A and uh, just a very fun little goby. I've never kept this one. Uh, but they're becoming more and more popular. Very yeah. cool. We've already had quite a few people order these today, so they'll be pretty, they'll go pretty fast. But hopefully we're getting back into the cooler months. It's a lot easier to get gobies in. As you know, they like things a little cooler, so shipping them when it's super hot isn't always the best. Not fun. Nope. And we got some hendra here, betta hendra. So these are wild caught wild bettas. These guys are pretty darn aggressive. Uh, they will you know, be on each other. They can't, they can be kept, you know, in group colonies. They should be kept in group colonies, but they need to have plenty of hiding space, plenty of territory. Just Betta Samorum uh, is another really great Betta. Well, most big. people think these are boring. I love these. I love big, dumb brown Bettas. So I love that shimmer on the tail. Yeah, look um, at that turquoise, that yeah. green, wow. They, and they have oh, wonderful spots. Off. Yeah, he is like wanting to bite me. Um, these are great fish, okay. Uh, they're great to keep in a group. They don't got as much aggression towards each other as they do to other things. So don't put them in with anything else. I think I, I'm keeping a very similar one at home with Cory's and that is it. Mm. Um, Cory's can be with any wild betta. They, they do fine with them, but. And then here's the betta falcs, red skirt betta is what we have them common named as. Uh, these are a little bit more jittery. Uh, they like to hide. These are very, very social. They should be kept in groups with lots of cover. Um, they could be kept in a smaller aquarium uh, as they don't need as much personal territory. Betta Embellus is going to be in the same kind of situation. This is one that your normal trade strain bettas your, are kind of like bred off of a lot of the time, like your aliens and things like that. Oh, okay. So, yeah, very shy little dudes, not very aggressive, but these are the ones that have like the very intense, like red around the rim of the fin. Oh, with I the can blue. see it on this guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so they're wow. all like very much hiding right now, unfortunately. They were showing off earlier, but um, very, very cool fish. All right, striped barbs. Pretty fun. Yeah, these are great. Uh, they got little whiskers, so they're um, always a win for me. If it has whiskers, I want it. Ooh, the now rombo check out barb. These guys. Yeah, I love these. Rombo snakeskins. These are fantastic. You will definitely want to get a good school of these to add to your aquarium. Yeah, very nice. Lake Inlay Danios. These are one of my favorites. Look at the spaz. They need to, they'll calm down in just a second. They, they're <laughs> always like, they're very food driven. They're very zoomy. And they, when you take off the lid, you have to be careful in catching because they will rock it out. I don't, it's probably not showing up super good on camera, but they have these really great hash marks across their body. Um, so it's like silver fish, but a really cool pattern. And the way the light catches them, they're really fun to add to your tank and they're pretty reasonably priced. Oh, black ruby barbs. I see everybody loves tiger barbs and I'm and I'm just like, why don't you get these? These are the males are just stunning. I love keeping these in outdoor tubs. Look at this male. Oh man. Yeah. Very common but very beautiful. Hill strain loaches. Uh, these guys we always have them. Oh, um, reticulated, yep. Yep, the reticulated. We have four tanks of reticulateds right now. So here we've got some Borneo sucker loaches. Very cute little guys. Uh, so this is a, this is 
uh, gastromyzon species. This is an assorted, so if you see fish with different patterns, um, that's what this tank is. It's gonna be a big mishmash of everything. Um, yeah. It's very fun. Like I, there's, we have a customer who likes to buy these in bulk and then sort them <laughs> every six months or so. And uh, honestly, if I had the space and money to spend, I would do it too because there's so many really amazing patterns and shapes. Spotted hill strain. So, oh, there's a bunch on the back. These guys have a really wonderful pattern with some gold sheen to them. Oh, there we go. Now I can see it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Pygmy right. multi-stripe loach, another loach we have very regularly. One that I need to get. Very active, as you can see. Yeah, they're a good add-on to your community tank if you're willing to drop like a big, some money on like a big yeah, group like, of them. They would I be mean, fun to have zooming around in the background. So these are orange hatchets. We saw some of these at our retail store. Um, these are more closely related to like a Danio than a hatchet fish, but a very cool fish nonetheless. It deserves a lot of attention. And another good one if you don't want to use a heater. Yes, yeah, they like it a little chilly, so it's a good option for you. And rosy loaches. Yep, these are, if you do nano fish, I would highly recommend these. They're really fun. Yeah, a lot of activity, good color, honestly. Yep. Um, oh, the Kansu loach. I've been, I've been looking at these on your website for months now and haven't pulled the trigger yet, but now I really want some. Oh, these are really great. Oh gosh, they don't get like near, near as much attention as they should. Um, I feel like they're kind of a hard one to photograph, but those, that striping on them is very, very bold and uh, not super like fancy colors, but the pattern is fantastic. And the behavior, they're just goofballs. Yes, they're very goofy. Awesome. They're out and about. Dwarf horse face loaches. Not to be yeah. mixed up with the regular horse face loaches. The sizes are going to be significantly different on these guys. And these came in very small for what they normally come in for us. Um, they are like almost translucent. <laughs> when I first saw these, I was like, those are some weird coolie loaches. <laughs> no, yeah, they're horse face loaches. They've, they've got that little snoot. They're just so small right now. They'll have to grow into it. All right, and one of my absolute favorite loaches the ornate tiger sand loach. Um, I gotta say, for the price, you're probably not gonna get a better loach. These are, these eat out of my hands at home. They're just so social. Uh, they love seeing you come to their tank. They always come to the front when they see you. I haven't figured out what causes them to lose their, their stripes, uh, but mine, sometimes they'll have the stripes and sometimes they won't, so. For all we know, in like another three years, there'll be a subspecies. Yeah, most likely. Chinese zebra loaches. Yes, these. These are one of my favorite loaches. Yeah. Here. These are just absolutely stunning. You like the little houses in our tanks? <laughs> yeah, I do, actually. We'll add just about anything we can find that we deem tank safe. Oh, that's a beautiful loach. Spined loach. Oh, I wanted to see this these. This is the one that wow. you were wondering about. So yeah, these Those are, are way awesome. bigger than I thought. And we don't have them like all the time. That's a, kind of a medium rare one. Wow. These are really cool. Some of these might be pushing like five inches too. There's yeah, some big ones in there. Horse face loaches. Not the dwarf. Not the dwarf. Uh, I love these guys. They're so cute. The uh, horse face and the moose face. I like them. They're both just funky looking. Their little faces. The peppermint loach, which I just got a group of these as well. And there's one colored up right here. Um, I wouldn't even call that colored up. I would say he has the most color out of all these. Uh, but they'll, the color when they start spawning is just absolutely insane on these. Very beautiful fish. Highly recommend. Oh, I might ask you to get this guy out of here. I'm going to get him out. He's uh, he's really cool. I think we only got... Pellegrini? Pellegrini. Yeah, I think he might be my last one. We only got oh, like... Oh, that's too bad. I think we only got like five or six. Like, yeah, I don't have any behind the sponge, so... Come on, dude. <laughs> You can at least Maybe we won't get him out of there. He's uh says, this is my house and I am not leaving. Oh, there are two. Oh, there are two in there, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you can 
see them if I do that. Barely. No? Okay. Bummer. But, yeah. Come on, guys. I mean, you could tell by the tail just how pretty Ooh, this lotion is. Look at is. how big he is. <laughs> He's probably stuck in there. <laughs> Are you stuck, sir? No. This is the best way to I'm check, usually. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. What a pretty loach. Oh my gosh. If that was male and female, I would buy them. No way of knowing, I don't think. No, they're so hard to sex. Yeah, so I got those two and then that's it. I only have the two. So, And these cool. demand a pretty penny, just be aware. But man, are they awesome. Yeah, they've sold pretty slow because they've been here all summer. So that's how he's gotten that fat. Pandagara, always a fan favorite. This is a fish that if I was gonna suggest someone needed algae control, I would suggest this fish because he'll eat other things too, but he does like snacking on algae and he's gonna be good for most tank sizes and have minimal aggression, so. Yeah, very good for community tanks. So next up is the pasta loach, which I also have. <laughs> Uh, and these get really nice red markings on their tails. You can kind of see a little bit on this guy. And again, just you get that typical loach goofy behavior. Just really fun. Hoping to spawn mine eventually. You can see we've got pearl danios. We've been keeping uh, tank raised and wild caught through the summer, so that's been pretty cool. Oh, this is another one I wanted to see, the forktail loach. Uh, you got one back there. These are very big hiders, so they'll come out once I do this. There's quite a few in here, actually. Oh, wow. But they're very tiny. They're much smaller than you would think. Yeah. And uh, they're very shy, so. Really cool looking, though. Yeah, they've almost like, they almost got like a ghost knife, black ghost yeah. knife look to them. Um, but. It's like a whoop. ghost knife and a coolie loach. Yep. Crossed. Brown mosaic hill stream loach. I really like these ones. I like the pattern on these ones. Yeah, they're very speckly. I'll zoom in on this guy. You can kind of see it. Not the best. Saddled Hillstream loaches. Yeah, these are really cool. Yeah, these are People very pretty. People are always pretty. calling and asking when I get these in. And uh, I'm always like, well, only like two or three times a year. So. Get them while you can. Get them while you can. African fire barb. Oh, I like a little nano barb. That's pretty neat. Yep, some nice striping on those. And then, you know, we got gold clown barbs. It's another good kind of staple for us. Yeah. Giant danios, they're one of my favorite. Uh, Not giant yet, but they'll get they'll there. They'll get there. I really like those. I like I like big danios. They're my I favorite. I like putting those with rainbows. Um, Eight banded barb. Yep, some of those. So, what is going on back here? Uh, they're freaking what out. in the world? There might be some food back there in the corner too as well. Red lizard hillstream loaches are just phenomenal loaches. Um, and probably one that I'll be going home with. Ooh, look at that guy in the back there. Yeah, these are very much worth it. Ooh. Okay, I'm sold. Yeah, these are one of the best. The best. I think these are one of the yeah. best loaches we have right now. Bag them up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just some false Siamese algae eaters, so, you know. Another species of Gara. Yep. So now we're heading into Rift Lake cichlids, which I'm a little rusty on, so this could be interesting. I'm rusty as well, so. Uh, I used to be really big into African cichlids, but I've kind of gone away the last couple of years. But, you know, we're going to see a lot of peacocks. Uh, there's some barbs in there. Oh, the lemon fin barb. I saw, I saw these for the first time at the retail store. Pretty cool barb. Obviously can stand up to the uh, thrashing of African cichlids. Yeah, these Alonicara. Very nice. Now these uh, giraffe haps we do not get very often, especially at this size. Um, they are, these are actually a cool one, so. Yeah, and they're gonna get way bigger, folks, so do yeah. your research on them. And then one of my favorite barbs, the Dawkinsia. Uh, Aurelius barb there, and some Glossolepis diorti. I know that one. Really nice Glossolepis. Um, it's just some Alunacara here. I'm not sure which ones. So the Alunacara species firefish. 
with Fire. more of the Indian lemon fin barbs. So. All right. I'm liking the rainbows in the uh, African cichlid section. <laughs> yeah. Uh, these, I think, are my favorite rainbow that we have, the crimson, crimson spotted rainbow. Um, I haven't kept any rainbows yet. They are on my list. But How dare you. I really like these. I don't have the tank space, I feel, to do them justice. You know what I mean? Well, okay. But, I mean, there's pigmas, there's kamaka. There's yeah, some yeah. small ones. I've had so. my eye on the kamaka. <laughs> Kalitawa. Looks like they're just starting to get to the size where you're going to get some color on them. Very pretty fish. One of my favorite rainbows. Uh, to my absolute favorite rainbow that uh, does have color, the Skull Creek. And uh, I love the black and yellow vertical stripes and then the black fins. Uh, very little, they're just starting to color up. Uh, they'll get a little bit bigger and then they'll really start to get some color on them. All right, uh, we've got Neolamprologus brevis sunspot. So another great. I feel like if I look hard enough, eventually I'll find some fry. Oh, uh, maybe, Ooh, maybe not. not in this no. one. They haven't been here very long, but oh, okay. uh, in our breeder row, I'm sure we still have them. Um, we do have some dwarf petricola in here. They're just hiding under their rocks. One of my all-time favorite catfish. Oh my goodness, I love these so much. Like, I want to start probably an African tank just to have these guys. Totally worth it. So uh, the yellow blaze, mm -hmm. um, I'll put a picture of this fish up, is absolutely beautiful. Uh, but obviously these are grow out, so no color yet. I am a big Altolamprologus fan. So these are my second favorite, the compressed seps gold face. We're gonna see my favorite here in a few minutes. Yeah, but we've I, I also would... got Neolamprologus splendens helanthius in here as well. And in here we just got more Alana Cara. And, uh, Oh, the Copatochromus azurus. That's a nice blue fish. Yes. Uh, if you're into, if you're into blue, Copatochromus is the fish for you. Oh, here ah, we the go. Golds. The Chiktika tr gold. These are my favorite. Yeah, another. Probably, if there was ever a fish that grew slower than rainbows, it's probably these guys. Yeah, they take forever. <laughs> it's one of the reasons I never kept them. I just I got a lot of patience, but I don't know if I got that much patience. Oh, Devocii. Yeah, that just is saying, don't feed these guys flake food. Yep. They or, like algae. Yep, they're getting a rapashi mix instead. Okay. Soylent green. Yes. Another one that everybody's always super excited about, um, for good reason, Lampro Lamprologus ocelotus gold. Aggressive little dudes. They just, one just bit another one on camera. <laughs> yep. Uh, also Lamprologus calvus ink fin is in there as well. Well, these are really nice. Oh uh, man, they are just showing you all the attention. Yeah, lots of color too. Lots of yellow. These are the rock crebenses. I've never kept these. Yeah, I don't know a lot about these to be honest. Yeah, me neither. I just, the, the yellow caught my eyes. I had to come down and film them. Panda slash melon barbs that are going to be psycho, but. They are high energy all the time. This is another one when I'm ha having to catch them, they will like spring load out of the tank and into my face. <laughs> And some uh, Tania Lattice Empress, Red Empress. Starting to show some color on their yeah. bellies. That's a good size. Neon Golden Stripe Shark, interesting. Very cute, chubby little faces. Yeah, good some gold nice, coloration. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. That's a new one for me. The Marisai Rainbows, again, right at that size where they're gonna start coloring up soon. Got the nice red tails. And uh, when they start spawning, they can turn jet black. It's very, very cool. Golden belly barbs. We've got a lot of really nice barbs right now. Um, more stuff than just our staple fish. So that's been really fun. All right, so here's a favorite, the topaz cichlid. Did we see these earlier? Or we I saw think these I'm... at the retail store. Okay. So I'm, there's a couple. Here's one little guy right there. Um, trademarked by their bright blue eye. They are a little shy, so they are running straight to the back because they don't like my lights. Again, one of my favorite fish. Yes. At $19.99 a pop. <laughs> the, totally uh, worth it, pale though. The pale chub. And I just know these aren't showing up on camera. Um, if you find a photo of these online to kind of pop in there, they are just awesome. I will tell you, if you Google this fish, one of the very first videos that come up is going to be of uh, this fish spawning and they're full grown, full colored, and they're just amazing. Very cool fish. The hikas in here, okay. as well as some red tigers. So this is another one that's like 
not much now, but this is one that I would have if I if I kept cichlids. <laughs> and uh, the beautiful kakis. Xenotilapia bathophilus. Awesome fish. Awesome fish. This oh, is yeah. one of those ones that like are worth making me try to set up an African tank. <laughs> I'm a lazy fish keeper, so I want to keep things that pretty much go in the water that I have already. So anything with extra work, I usually avoid. But these guys, they're worth it. And some Kalitawa in there. Whole row of rainbows here. We're going to start with some really nice Kamakas. So really nice, active, good looking Kamaka rainbows. Uh, here we have the red dragons. Which Those are, are still on quarantine. As you can see, there's plenty of meds in the water there. Very good size. So when these come out of quarantine, you're probably going to want to jump on them because those are large. Uh, here's some goiter river. This is one of the ones that I think might be one of my favorites just from watching them in the tanks. Yeah, very easy to spawn too. Next we have uh, Allen Iowa pogas scooting around doing their thing. One of my favorite here, the uh, threadfin rainbows. Looks like they're getting medicated too. But this absolute beautiful fish. Obviously you don't put them with fin nippers. Deep uh, water creek rainbows. Yeah, these are nice. The splendida. Very nice reds on them. Some really good looking millennium rainbows. Holy smokes. Yeah, they, they came in they came in looking that good. Like we felt really lucky getting those in. They have not been much work to get them to just. Yeah, that's insane like color. Like I put those in a show tank. Oh yeah, wow. Emerald greens, these ones are still also on quarantine. In green water? In green water. <laughs> if they're in green water, even if the tag says catch, chances are we ran out of tags. Those things are still on quarantine. Medium Bozmani. Now this is my favorite size to buy a rainbow fish at. Madagascars. I like these quite a bit. Yeah, very underrated. And they get a lot bigger than people think too. About five, six inches. Very cool. For all of our discus lovers, you're in for a treat. We've got all kinds of discus here. What can you tell us about these? Uh, these are gonna be our three inch discus. So in this tank, we've got our red cover, our pigeon snake skin, and our blue turquoise discus. Uh, we carry two sizes. They're usually marked 2.5 to 3.5 inches in diameter. Uh, we don't ship anything really that gets over four inches because they start to really not ship that well. The only thing you'll see ships that big are going to be wild caught discus. So, uh, yeah, we always have uh, we always have a lot of good varieties of these at pretty good prices. So definitely check them out. This one's got some algae on it. So there's a skylight above us. These discus were actually, if you see our note, they were laying eggs. They laid egg tw eggs twice and still ate them all. Um, so, you know, maybe they'll be good parents eventually. But we've got yellow pigeon snakeskin and tiger turquoise in here. Again, these are our three, three and a half inch in diameter discus. And this tank, we've got our cobalts and our leopard discus. Uh, your leopards are going to be a little bit closer to a uh, wild caught coloration, but, you know, still very tank, uh, tank strain. So something I want to note about our discus is these guys are tank raised. Therefore, they do not need to be kept in the super, super low, like 6.8 pH. These guys are currently being kept in 7, 7.2 pH. Um, temp is going to be around 86 degrees, and they're plenty happy with that. Um, they, like I said, they've been spawning in these tanks at those so you don't need to chase your pH and buffer way down for these guys. Nice. So again, we've got more leopard snakeskin discus and pigeon checkerboard discus. Uh, these guys look really good right now. Uh, again, those are around the three, three and a half inches. Um, very cool fish. What's so. the dog's name? Oh, you know, I, I think <laughs> his name is because he's actually one of our office dogs. Because we—that's uh, Elwood. We have a—we have a couple office dogs, and that's—that's okay. that's Elwood. <laughs> so that's it. We didn't hit every tank because there's 1,200 of them, but we tried to find the coolest stuff to show you. We skipped a lot of the uh, the normal everyday stuff. Um, and thank you so much for having me out here. Um, I feel so privileged to be the first person ever invited to film here. And yes, I got to mention it because. I love this place. I think it's a big deal. I'm so happy and thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a lot of fun so far. So we'll keep, 
keep the party going. Awesome. Also, don't forget, you get a 5% discount code using Steamfot5 at checkout at the uh, Wet Spot Tropical Fish website. So take advantage of that, and I'll see you all in the next video.